Hey everyone, how are you going today? We are back with something a little bit different. Uh, this is the Space Mitt Muse Pie, which is really interesting. These lovely folks uh, who make this awesome SOC, I think the first one to market that has RVV 1.0 and RVA 22. So Risk 5 of course, but really nice people reached out and they're gonna be sending me some of their other stuff as it comes out, but this is kind of their, their first one out. This is what was in the Banana Pie BPI F3 that I showed previously. Where, uh, where that had the K1 though, this has the M1. Um, so I thought I'll do a bit of a deep dive into it, see what it's capable of, and I'll actually try out their Bayambu uh, desktop operating system this time, maybe even the NAS one, depending on how we go for time. So first things first, as usual, I just want to thank PCBWay. They are sponsoring this. They're sponsoring heaps of stuff like that Deep Sleeper project that don't even know where it is, uh, that I'm working on, and they continue to sponsor lots of other great creators, so check them out, but check out, and use the link below, this competition they've got on. So once a year, I think it is, they do their project design contest, and this year, they are also added STM32 to it. So essentially, you can create an electronic project, a mechanical project, or an STM32 project, and uh, enter it. Uh, enter their competition and you pretty much always win. You win something, right? So uh, if we have a look down here, so submissions, blah, blah, blah. Where was it? Where's the prizes? Judges, prize. Okay, yep. I completely scrolled past it. So first prize, 1500 bucks cash and $200 coupon and a palm size robot dog. Second place, 1000 bucks, 100 bucks, Raspberry Pi 5. Third place, 500 bucks, 50 bucks and open MV4. Uh, then you get a popular design prize, a partic participation prize, and the STM32 Great Project Prize gets a six claw uh, soldering table. These things are super handy, but that's only for the STM32 prize. So you've got a while to enter. They're not going to start reviewing them until 20th of January, and I would encourage you. I'm probably going to put Deep Sleeper in there because I'm very proud of it. And you can go and have a look at some of the other submissions and you know uh, what some of the past winners have been as well. So thank you, PCBWay. Back to this, though. This is... Uh, obviously a bigger form factor. Let's go adjust my camera here. You're gonna get to see my terminal. I just want to do 25 should be about right. This is the Muse Pi uh, and as you can see there is that M1 SOC and it's really really similar form factor to the other one. I'm actually gonna dial that back slightly. Um, really similar form factor to the F3. If we go around the board and have a look at it here you got MIPI CSI and MIPI DSI. Now that's, uh, they've actually got two four lane CSI connectors, which is pretty sweet. Uh, interestingly, this is their P1 PMIC. They sent me some of those as well, and I'm gonna come up with a project for them. So if you've got any idea of what I should do with the P1, which is an awesome little power management IC, let me know. It's over here though, it's not over near the input, which is different to the F3. Uh, you've then got your HDMI port, that's HDMI 1.4, it'll do 1080p at 60 FPS. USB 3, USB 2, that isn't on the go port from what I remember. Um, yeah, it says OTG there. We've got uh, the SOC there. Now, interestingly, looking at the way they've arranged this, you've got your 16 gig of RAM and then your EMMC here. Um, I will need to check that. We'll check the data sheet because I thought the memory was built into this, but it might be separate. Uh, we've got our dual LAN, very similar, 26 pin Raspberry Pi style header. There are debug ports there. We've got a Wi-Fi interface. And then over this side, you've got your two antennas because that's a dual band AX. Uh, four pin TRS, left and right speakers, reset, flash and power. And then your uh, PD 3.0 from memory, 12 volt, three amp maximum power supply. What's really neat though is when you turn it over, you've got SD card slot, which is pretty neat, but you've got dual M2 M keyed. And that means these are PCIe, they're PCIe uh, 2X and generation 2.1. So 10 gigabit each, which is pretty neat. And I might, I might test some things with that, we'll see. But it's obviously not the credit card form factor. It's a bit bigger. They do have the Pi card that's gonna be coming out. We'll see that on their website most likely. Um, and they're doing a whole pile of other things. One of them I'm really excited about, we'll hopefully see in a future video, is the Muse book that has some excellent features for tinkerers, developers, hobbyists, enthusiasts, programmers, embedded Linux, sysadmins, and all the rest. Now, the K1 versus the M1 has been a little bit of controversy because they are very, very similar. They're essentially the same thing, but you can see this one's uh, quite a 
thick casing and everything on it. So the M1 is cranked up to a higher clock speed from what I recall. And that's about it. Um, the K1 is usually four or eight gig of RAM. The M1 will do 16 gig of RAM. That's why I was confused about this DDR that was separate. And then I forgot to mention as well, you've got your little boot uh, chip there, your boot dip switch. So these come pre-imaged, uh, but they are quite easy to update the image just using fast boot. So you don't have to have any special tools and it should work on most operating systems. And we will have a look at that. Now, uh, we're also gonna test, uh, we're gonna check out hardware as we did. We're going to have a look at the documentation that's available. Have a look at the software because there's kind of four or five different software images, which is pretty sweet. Uh, test its power consumption, update it, benchmark it, and then we'll be out of here. So first and foremost, let's have a look at a first boot. Now, full disclosure, I have already booted this uh, just to make sure it did have an image on it because I wasn't too certain from the documentation I was reading. And um, in doing so, I shut it down without proceeding through the boot setup, which means it's going to have a little whinge about, uh, about its... Uh, unclean shutdown and whatnot. So we have HDMI out there going to the capture card. We'll jump over to that and then I'll tell you when I'm applying power, I'm plugging it in now. Nice little bamboo. I'm guessing splash. It's, it's a ship with a B. All right, nice. I'm just going to plug my mouse and keyboard into it too. So we've got some control when it comes across. Pulse system XZ compression not supported. That's interesting. Little bit of a slow boot, but this is a full OS and it's um, the older version too. So we'll have to update that to see how it goes. Looks like we're about to get a GUI come up. Ooh, very pretty. It's obviously doing some heavy thinking here. It might be a little bit unhappy from my unsafe shutdowns. All right, excellent. That's looking, it's looking like what we'll want. Welcome, thank you. This is quite good. So a lot of images that you get um, aren't, you know, aren't set up for OOBE, out of the box experience, uh, sys prepped in the Windows world. This is. Um, so this is a customized, uh, I can never remember the bloody password of this, customized Ubuntu image, uh, and it forms part of their BSP, their, um, what does that even stand for? It's their board support package. So this is essentially their base image that everything can be built on top of. Uh, that's designed for this board or for this SOC um, in particular with all the drives and everything. So what we're seeing here is Wi-Fi working. We've got the out of the box setup. I'm in WA and I don't want any of those things. So owner, owner, I know, I know, owner. They are also working on their version two of the BSP and we'll test that out. So the BSP itself, the, the, they release just the raw buy and boot Linux, which is the absolute minimum. And then they've got different distributions on top of that. Now I didn't test it with the BPI F3 because uh, I don't like odd, strange, different Linux images. I like the stock standard stuff that we're used to. That being said though, this is their BSP. They've got their repos set up and it's not just like you'll see those GitHub or Gitty repos for other boards where they've kind of push the release or push one image and then they're stuck on an old uh, Linux kernel or whatnot. These guys seem to be maintaining a entire um, repo and everything that goes with it, including kind of all up to date bits. Now, let's quickly make this a little bit easier to read. Ah, whatever, you can read that, I can't so well. So we have a 6.1 Linux kernel, which is excellent. Uh, sudo su. We have if config installed. Do we have screen? No, we don't have screen, but that's pretty good. I mean, it's got sudo and if config, even though you all say I should be using the IP tool, but whatever, stop whinging. Proc CPU info. 
All right, there's our eight cores there. That's their X60, and you can see they have their V for the vector instructions. Oh, I did not read that. I'm going to have to go back and see what that was at some point. No swap configured. Um, this is DDR, so it would be, uh, sorry, is EMMC, so it would, uh, from what I understand, be okay to do. Eight gig of RAM, though, is absolutely heaps. That is plenty. Um, so, we're... Oh, okay, we're going to have to app update and app install GLX. Oh, app. Search GLMark. See what version of GLMark they've got going there. Um, dual band Wi Fi has joined and is looking healthy. Where is. Not. Um, I'm asking he was a little bit dicky, but this SOC. Oh, yeah, it's running a little bit hot. Um, it's running a little bit laggy. It might be thermally limited. So whilst that's going, whilst that's updating, what I'm going to do is switch back. We're just going to stick a little heat sink on it. It's probably not strictly necessary, um, but I do want to benchmark it. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of this silicon paste on. Oh, bloody hell. Hang on, let me clean that up. Some Maccas being very careful here. This is a little bit old. Oh, that's disgusting. There we go. So we just need a small bit on there. That's plenty. And then I missed the bin as well. Um, let's have a look at the doco whilst we wait for that apt update. So the documentation of their developer subdomain is actually really good. It looks like a lot of the translation uh, might be automatic. You can switch it up here if need be. But they've got some great information. So there's the... Huh, that's quite interesting. Um, there's the block diagram. You can see there's a lot going on in this SOC, which is pretty sweet. And they break it down into a lot of different um, sections. Like, uh, struggling to communicate well today. They don't cover what this little connector here is, but the P1 PMIC supports a uh, rechargeable, like a CR2032 sort of coin cell. So you could plug one in there, that'd be your RTC or whatnot. Um, they go through the P1 and the power domains a fair bit, and they give you some good information here. Pretty much everything you're going to need to make use of what is essentially an example board. Um, now, flashing the firmware, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. You can use their Titan flasher, or you can just use the um, fastboot tool. So they've got that information here. We will be trying that. What I want to see, though... Ah, no, see, they're getting into some of the other things. Check out some of the beastly stuff that they're making. Like, this Muse shelf, if it wants to load... No, there's no doco for it, is a server. Is a massive, massive Risk Five server. So let's jump back and see where this is up to. All right, we've got some GLMark options. Um, let's get one of those installing and I'll, ah, if I'm not having a slow moment, sorry about this folks, a little bit disorganized, we'll get there. Uh, what I did want to look at was the pins and just see where my five volt is for this heatsink. The... No. Hey, all right. 3.3 on pin one. 3.3 there. So we want pins two and six. Now, do they have... I'm assuming that dot is pin one, which will be 3.3 volts. So let's try connecting to that and see how that goes. So... In one, three point three volts, and then that means across and down two should be ground. Yep. All right. So then, where was that five volts? Ah, pin two. So in theory, oh, excellent. Now she's going a bit faster. Ah, 
Fucking Jesus. All right, it barely reaches. Let's. Now this fan really isn't going to give it the um, the cooling support or the thermal support that this SOC will be screaming for, but it is better than nothing. So let's jump back there and see how it's doing. We'll plug mouse and keyboard back in. There we go. So we can install GeoMark 2 uh, for Wayland or X11. What are we using here? Uh, it's the easiest way to find that. Wayland, all right. So, app search, uh, app install GeoMark 2. ES2, oh, let's just see how it goes with the Wayland version. A Bluetooth speaker is making some noise now for some reason as well. I don't know why or if something's meant to be playing. Oh no, it's not. It's the little fan. So uh, I'm slowly getting everything out here how I want it to be recording. This won't be permanent. Um, when I do move into the house that's being built, which is about 100 metres from me, 50 metres, um, I'll have better lighting, uh, hopefully a better quality camera, and this will be more of a dedicated workspace. In the meantime, this is just what we're stuck with. Uh, so out of my workshop, it's noisy, it gets hot, it gets cold. There are dogs and cars and all sorts going on. But, you know, within one year, I'm aiming to have a professional setup for doing this sort of thing. And I'm hoping that it maybe makes me some money by then as well, as it is so far from this YouTube channel and from the e-commerce shop, I'm not making any money. This is all just supporting itself. Uh, so it's a huge time sink for no return, but I believe in planning for the future and Huh STG one that ah oh. That would be why no Alrighty, so let's try the ES version Yeah, I believe in uh, banking on the future so hmm. What am I doing wrong? Yes, two way on. Yep. How's this video already 18 minutes, or at least my recording? That's ridiculous. Sorry, folks. This is just how long it goes for sometimes. You'll live. Don't even have anything to drink because it's not even midday yet. So GLES is pretty standard. Um, that makes sense with Wayland actually as well. I think they're targeted GLES, so they've got a guaranteed uh, capable set of instructions to use. You can get a GL2ES, whatever it's called. Yeah, I think it's called GL2ES. Um, wrapper application for anything that needs it. There we go. But um, I prefer not to use things like that. Our other things work out of the box. That is looking very nice and smooth. Let's see. 300 FPS. All right, so we've got hardware acceleration there. That means as well, and in theory, we can actually watch full screen videos without any tearing or problems. Because this should be in 1080p as well, not interlaced like one of those other boards we tested out. All right, youtube.com slash platinum tinkers. Yep, don't care. We got still down here. Shotwell, okay. LibreOffice, Rhythm Box, System Monitor. So System Monitor says if there's anything else going on. Uh, this SOC does also have a two tops NPU, um, which could be quite handy for those that want to run some small models locally. Two tops would get you by with um, a very very small LLM, but also really good for just um, basic use, text to speech, that sort of stuff. All right, you can see the t CPU temperatures and everything there. It's holding its own. If we go and have a look at Deep Sleep, which has been consuming my life the last week, writing the code for this. Um, got it working pretty quickly, but then just optimizing and trying to get it down to the micro amps. I've got it down to, um, what was it? It's about two milliamps I've got it down to, but I really want to get it down to that, uh, down to less than, I think it's 195 micro amps.
Hey everyone, how the fuck are you going today? Right. This is is it going to play back at 1080? So I've been doing all sorts this morning, but There's a little bit I've of lag here. There's some project. struggle going on. Again, it's not getting the cooling it deserves. Um, it could very well be limiting itself for that reason. What was this saying? That's that idea. Uh, 1.6 is warming up a bit though, and some of the CPUs are getting hit pretty hard. I was laying in bed early in the morning. That is going though. Um, it's definitely having some little issues, but to be expected. So let's kill that off and let's have a look at a few other things now. We've seen what it can do, we've seen the documentation. Let's have a look at the operating systems and let's update it with a new one. So if we go back over here. was just mulling over. You can see. Uh, in their repo, ignore the fact that it says K1, it's for K1 and M1. Uh, they've got a few different things here. So Flash All just has some scripts for flashing it. You've got Bionboo Linux and Bionboo. So Bionboo Linux is their BSP. Bionboo is their desktop operating system from there. And if we have a look at that, so you can see Bionboo explains it here and all the APIs that are exposed and everything like that. Bionboo uh, NAS is then a variation on that designed specifically for NAS functionality, which I'm quite excited about. Uh, we won't test that today. We might do a part two of this because those 10 gig interfaces on the back theoretically mean you can use a um, PCI, uh, M2 to PCIe, don't know why I'm getting a rolling shutter, M2 to PCIe adapter um, and stick a 10 big gigabit network card on one of them. And then the other one you could use something like the Radshaw Penta hat and have a whole pile of SSD. So if you want to see this turned into a NAS, running the NAS OS, let me know, because I have also just ordered like a new X99 board with a pile of SATA ports and a uh, N3 uh, Johnsboro, whatever it's called, NAS case, which is ITX, so similar, a little bit bigger. Um, so then they also have their BSP, so Bionboo Linux is kind of the, the very minimal version uh, that you can build your distribution on top of. And then they've got their BSP base open WRT. So given that this has Wi-Fi and dual gigabit LAN, couldn't see any PoE headers actually, um, but it gives you this open WRT image, which is also really neat. I think they're covering uh, bases for use case really well there, but also showing off all of the features. So what I downloaded was their latest version two of the desktop image. So if we go buy and boo, there is RC2 of the desktop. So jumping over to the terminal, Download CD, where'd I put a space? I hope there's nothing dodgy in there. Oh, I've already extracted that. I do have the NAS image here. I don't think I downloaded the desktop image. The reason for that would most likely be that you should be able to update this from, let's, just get rid of that. Get rid of that. Ah, uh, the Wi Fi would be struggling because there's no antennas on it. Um, I do sell antennas on their own if you need them. Sudo do release upgrade. Cleaner. Oh, no. See what it says it wants to update to on that uh, cat etc. Binary 105 it shipped with. All right. Gonna take us up to 115. I reckon no. Let's go have a look at the NAS image. So I'll unplug my keyboard and mouse and we'll test out this fast boot flashing process as well. Coming back to here, I'm just gonna yank that power straight out of there and find where the hell oh, I'm using that USB cable. Um hang on. There we go. Yeah, there we go. My mic had gone flat, so I was just running off a battery. So plug this into USB. And what I'm gonna do is when I plug this board in, I'm gonna be holding down the FDL for firmware download. I think it is FDL. And that's gonna put it into its uh, flash mode. And you can see there, it's just got both lights on. So like that, fall to the side. And over here, uh, yes, whoa. Move that here, unzip, bamboo. On that note, pseudo D message tail. Yep, you can see the DFU device, that's handy. I've already also done a pseudo app install 
fast boot. That should, in theory, be all you need. There are two variations of fast boot, and you could always use the Titan flasher if need be. Now, let's have a quick look at this flash. Oh, whoop. Well, that's very interesting because I've just got a dot image file. Let's go back and have a look at this. Here's the zip. Ah, all right. So we need not the dot zip. We need the we need the dot zip, not the dot image dot zip. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Downloaded the wrong one. So nas.zip, five hundred fifty five meg. Fifty minutes left. I'm going to slap pause on this one. Um, no, I'm not. What we can do in the meantime is see how much power it consumes. That's something that we were quite curious about. So, got my little power consumption tester here. We will put that in there. This thing is so handy. This is why I've been working on the Deep Sleeper with because it gives you such a uh, high, such fine resolution. Now, we do have the fan running on here, so we'll try it with and without. It's about half amp as it's booting. All right, got up to uh, 800 and something milliamps there. I'm gonna jump over and, what's it doing? It's just booting at the moment, all right. Sitting around the 800s now. I'd assume that no, it's nearly at the desktop. 53. Go on, let's watch this till it gets to the desktop. Without those Wi Fi antennas on there as well. Wi Fi, there we go. It's probably going to be trying pretty bloody hard. 600, not bad. If we pop that fan off, let's just see what that drops to. So 600, 650. Not bad at all. Six hundred milliamps for what it's doing, I find pretty bloody impressive. I will leave this hooked up when I run Geekbench, which will be the last thing that I do. Um, this video is already twenty-eight minutes long now, so I'm just going to wait for this download, and then once that's done, I'll resume the video and we'll do that fast boot flash. Hold, please. All right, we're back, and that's all done. So we jump back to terminal, move that here. They're the files that we're looking for before. I also cleaned up the other crap that we had in this directory so we don't have to worry about it so much. So this is back uh, plugged in, as we should see. Yep. Wait for this to extract, and then we'll install the new NAS GUI. And we'll see what the first boot for that's like, how much power it consumes, what Linux OS, uh, Linux kernel it has, and we'll use that to benchmark it since it is 2.0 uh, RC2. So, I mean, the device is there. Maybe I need to unplug it, plug it back in. Oh, you know what? It probably needs to be done as sudo. Yeah. That's looking a bit more like it, isn't it? Well, block sizes then. Probably be a bit faster if it didn't write 200k chunks at a time, but so be it. Most of that is probably going to most of that delay is probably going to be on the output there. Um, realistically, it doesn't need to redraw that much, and it's going to take some time. Why is that not even? I just realized that it uh, doesn't appear to have been showing my terminal previously. So, once again, screwing up my video recordings, but now you can see what's going on earlier. Don't know what you were seeing, probably just black. Apologies for that. I'm going to pause this though. We'll come back to it. It's going to take a while. Finally done. And I realized I was wrong uh, in hindsight. So, uh, if we have a look over here, hoping that this is working. Um, that is a LPDDR4X chip, so eight gig. 
uh, which means the M1 can come with any amount of RAM. Um, the difference then is meant to be like 1.6 to 1.8 gig or gigahertz that is or something like that, but we saw this was running at 1.62. So um, that has written everything to disk. Let's go back then, or unplug this, bring it back in frame, and I'm gonna switch to the input and we'll watch first boot of this one, freshly flashed, and see what we've got. Did not catch the kernel version there, unfortunately. It also has very similar information about unclean shutdown and the lack of support for XED compression. Does seem a bit faster on the boot though. So a new, newer kernel means newer optimization, newer drivers, drivers that weren't there before, things like that. It can make quite a bit of difference. Now, this is the NAS image, of course. Uh, that likely means it... Did I not just flash it? I'm very confused. Let me plug my keyboard and mouse in. Where did that write to then? Oops. All right. Oh, wow, the power button actually works like an ACPI power button. All right. What did that just write the flash data to? Let's go back, have a look here. And it should be writing to the EMMC. Is there anything that I missed in the documentation? Enter flash right, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe flash just, that's got to have been writing to the EMMC, but it's obviously not done anything. This Titan tool doesn't even look like it's a... Oh. No, I've, I've used that. I used that Titan tool for the... Um, yeah, I've used Titan tool for the F3. That is really, really strange. What's it doing? So... That is where we were before. All right. I guess we're gonna to have to do the do release upgrade and um, let that run. So, plug the keyboard and mouse back in. That's not gonna take us to 2.0, is it? All right, this is, this is still all the same. Why would it have not written to the flash? I'm gonna do some debugging. I'll get back to you shortly. This, this video is a bit longer now. Give me a tick. Jeez, it's getting warm. All right, I think I got there. As best I can figure out, uh, it's just to do with that image not quite being right for this board or something like that. Uh, the petitions might be wrong. It might have flashed further down. Um, the EMMC, I'm not sure. So what I've done now is just downloaded Titan tools for Linux, uh, made it executable, and we're gonna run that. And from memory, I don't even know if there's an English version, but I roughly recall what to do. Uh, that one, that one, that one. There we go. Uh, whatever that is. Zip file would be that one. Now, I don't remember what that little thing does. I think that is just the auto reset. Is that in the documentation? So it's just to leave it. Yeah, the banana pie or BPR documentation has the links um, if you need it to the Titan Tools Linux. It's doing something. Don't know what that is. Ah, oh, decompressing it, and then we hit go. There we go. Oh, sorry, I was just making sure it was actually recording it. So this, I mean, in theory, it should be doing all the exact same stuff. It might be using a version of Fastboot that's more compatible though. It might, um, if it'll let me scroll up. It looks like it's actually doing things in a slightly different 
order it is. Um, so it probably knows more about this board and knows what to do. Again, this is gonna take a little while, probably a bit quicker because it's not doing that output, output, so I'll pause it until this is ready. Back in a tick. All right, that's all ready as you can see. So let's pull it back out and uh, see if it actually does what we want. So same as before, I'll flick over to capture and now it's got power. So slightly longer video, but we're learning a few things here, which is definitely, definitely helpful. Um, I might let my rep know that sent me this, uh, that their instruction is a little bit wrong. Hopefully they can get that updated. Hopefully this will actually flash it. Otherwise in part two, because I do want that NAS image, we'll figure that out and we'll benchmark it with the Linux 6.1.15 kernel. But let's see what this does. Yeah, all right. That's instantly given us a very different output. Hmm, it's playing the keyboard and mouse. I might even need to plug in the bloody networking to this. So, based on Open Media Vault, Bionbo 2.0 RC2, just started immediately doing something. Oh, it kicked us straight back out. Righto. Okay, so this user doesn't have a bash shell. That's a pain in the ass. I'll, um, it's also, if we have a look back here, if I move my key, I've got another keyboard and mouse, so I don't have to keep moving this. Uh, it's only drawing 400, 500 milliamps, so that's pretty good. So I'm gonna get shell access to this, so I have to plug it into the network, and then I'm gonna run Geekbench on this and see what it comes up with. Uh, I'll post the link to the results below. I'll see what the power max is out with when it's doing so. Thanks again to PCBWay who continue to support this channel. And uh, with the link below, you get, I think, five bucks off your first order. And you can get, as you can see here, five to 10 pieces for five bucks. Uh, so make sure you use that to sign up because that knows that, you know, that makes sure they know that I'm getting supporters or I'm giving them support. And thanks to all of you guys for supporting as well. All your positive feedback and support. As I said, I don't make money from this, so it helps. Like and subscribe. I should have said that earlier. Let me know any questions or comments down below. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take it easy. Oh, just a quick one here. I did find that it's got root um, and it also broadcasts its own local access point. But if we go back and we'll just try that root login uh, back over here and we'll see if that works. I'll need to give it network access anyway to download Geekbench. No, so it's probably just passwordless SSH login for that root account. That's right, I'll figure it out. It was worth making a note anyway. And I'll also let Kiki know about that doco. Cheers, folks.